Hey guys, have you already digested the interview with Tone Vase? Perfect, because we still have a lot of fascinating things ahead. Are you ready? Today we have a lot of cool news. Can the price of BTC beat last year's record? Blockchain, in fact, freed mankind from slavery. US authorities spy on crypto users. How to protect your privacy? Where to get the fullest knowledge of cryptocurrencies and blockchain? When will Bitcoin ETF appear? What is crypto community discussing? Let's go. So, all quiet on the crypto front. The price of BTC still cannot fixate above $6,500. And though Bitcoin sometimes crosses this barrier, every time there's recession again. Nevertheless, some experts are sure that Bitcoin will repeat last year's rally and will go to the moon. At least the same situation as we have now has rained on the market in recent years. But the end of December, there has always been multiple growth. And generally, it doesn't matter how much Bitcoin costs now. Behind it, there's blockchain. And this very technology has freed humanity from hired slavery. At least that's what John McAfee believes in. Moreover, it was blockchain that allowed humanity to enter a new era, permissionless society. Well, I doubt to what extent cryptocurrencies free citizens. A research company, Dyer, found out that the US government spent $5 million to link user IDs with digital assets. Can you believe that? And all this while people are starving and cannot get basic medical care. But hey, there's also positive news. Google revised its policy of banning advertising crypto exchanges. Now businesses in the US and Japan will be able to promote their trading platforms. True, but for this, they will have to officially register through financial regulators and get a license to trade cryptocurrencies. Well, it's better than nothing, right? Write it in the comments, what do you think of this news? And further, I will tell you how to conduct the safest transactions. Is there any future for Bitcoin ETF? And the most important thing, what did our correspondent do in Berlin? Let's watch now. Hey guys, do you want to know a secret? Mm -hmm. Remember the $5 million and surveillance of the US government? Mm -hmm. So the majority of cryptocurrencies is not anonymous. Uh -uh. That is, anyone can easily determine how much money is transferred to whom, by whom, etc. They can spy on us, even right now. Well, that's why crypto enthusiasts have developed a new totally anonymous cryptocurrency, Smokin. It is based on Monero blockchain, one of the most secret cryptocurrencies in the world. But even Monero can be tracked. Therefore, Smokin developers have improved blockchain with the help of Ring Confidential Transactions, Ring CT, and 12 transactions mixing to guarantee the secrecy of the sender and receiver of money. No one could ever trace your money. Where's the money, Lebowski? Oh, oh man, that was painful. <laughs> hey, don't want to be in Lebowski's shoes? You smoking. Hey guys, and did you know that this year Bitcoin celebrates an anniversary? 10 years ago, the mysterious creator of the first cryptocurrency, Satoshi Nakamoto, published his monumental work, Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. So who knows what was the date when the BTC white paper appeared in free access? Write it in the comments. The first one to write the correct date will get the price and will send the t-shirt. While you're Googling the date, I suggest you throw a small party. In Berlin, a presentation of one of the most anticipated books about blockchain and cryptocurrencies was held. Hey, don't tell me that books are old-fashioned and I'd rather go and make my own cryptocurrency than read books, huh? Stop it. Remember Fahrenheit 451? We burned almost every physical book in the country. I'm not kidding. This was in Germany in the 1930s. Books are power. That's why our airborne stormtroopers managed to talk not only with Tone Vase, but also drove to Berlin. 
Here, Robert Kuefner presented a book dedicated to the 10th anniversary of the birth of the first cryptocurrency. It's called The Crypto Decade. Hey, I'm not going to tell this to you. Let's just listen to the author. What I'm trying to put the focus on uh, with this book is that there is so less education of what is actually happening in Cryptopia. Like everyone, especially if we open surface media, is talking about what's the price of the Bitcoin, where is it going, the bubble burst, and how can I make money, where shall I invest? I get those questions a lot, and I think it's, um, it's wrong, and I'm aiming for an attention shift towards the underlying technology, because um, there is so much more than just Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Wow, that's really cool. I even find myself thinking that I'm talking too much about the price of BTC. Oh man, I have so many questions for Robert. Fortunately, he agreed to answer them. Hey Robert, so where does the history of cryptocurrency begin? The 31st of October, Satoshi Nakamoto will turn 10 years old and um, I'm in it for like a really long time. We've seen a lot of ups and downs, so it's like a roller coaster we've been through over almost a decade and I um, took the opportunity, I had the attention that was required and the topic gets way too less attention still and um, I thought it'll be fantastic to start writing a book about it and there it is, it's called The Crypto Decade and it's about 10 years um, in cryptocurrency and what happened since Lehman Brothers going bankrupt. Hmm, Lehman. Satoshi, so what do you think? Is this book very complicated? Uh, what can readers learn from your book? especially those that just got into crypto lately, that um, heard about it from the news, let's say over the last year or so, they probably don't really know where it's all coming from and what all happened like in the history of cryptocurrencies. So uh, especially the early years, it was like a roller coaster ever since. Everyone is talking about bubble burst and um, regulation and all these um, things have been topics and uh, were discussed from the very beginning. Hey Robert, here's a tricky question. We're Nakamoto. You also have a Nakamoto company. So who is he? He's a brother from another mother. Well, um, I, I, I don't know him in person yet, but um, I think he's Jesus 2.0. He actually came to planet Earth to free the world from centralization. And um, yeah, uh, he's, a, he's a great character or um, a fantastic group of people that have changed the world forever. And uh, we're just at the beginning, so I'm really thankful that um, he shared his vision of a better future with us. Hmm. Jesus 2.0. Wow. I definitely have to read this book. Oh, but it's only in German. Uh, well, I couldn't help it, and I already bought a German-English dictionary. But wait. <sighs> Here we go. I'll do it in German. Oh, für Lewis. <laughs> that is so cool. Thank you, Robert. I'll have a book with the author's autograph. Man, I gotta stop. I've almost forgotten about my subscribers. I definitely should do a giveaway, right? So guys, subscribe to our channel, leave a comment under this video, and hit the thumbs up button. I will pick a random winner next week so you can start learning German right now. So what do you think? Which gift would Bitcoin like to receive on its birthday? That's right! The approval of at least one Bitcoin ETF! Come on! But you know what? This year, we shouldn't expect such a gift from the US authorities. That's what experts say. Well, we hope that the next year, there will be something pleasant for BTC. However, there is still a little consolation. Back at Crypto Company announced the release of physical Bitcoin futures. They will be bargained with at least three fiat currencies, which should attract institutional investors to the market. Hey, there's also good news for fans of Ethereum. The legendary platform for trading derivatives, Ledger X, intends to launch Ether futures. Experts say that futures can reduce the price of ETH, but in the long term, the cryptocurrency as well as the investors who will receive additional trading tools and protection will only benefit from it. I love the crypto community for the fact that these guys can find positive things in everything. By the way, I always try to be in the loop, and recently I started following all sorts of forums and social networks. So, how can I open this Twitter thing? Ah, there it is. 
Now, I will collect for you not only news, but reactions of the crypto hangouts. But hey, don't judge me, okay? I'm just learning this thing. So, let's go. <laughs> this week, everyone is discussing the sudden rise of Ripple. While all other altcoins are behaving like this, the price of XRP shot up by almost 80% for a week. They say that something similar is going on in the houses of Ripple holders. Particularly, jealous of this scenario is Buterin, because XRP overtook Ether in terms of turnover, and now it takes a second position after Bitcoin. Nice cats? Ha! My cat can beat them all. In fact, I'm worried about Vitalik. Rumor has it that he even decided to change his image so that angry investors would not recognize him on the street. How do you like his new style, huh? Does it fit him? I don't know. And now let's discuss our eternal problem. Regulators! Ugh. It seems to me that the more governments restrict cryptocurrencies, the more attention they attract to crypto. Indeed, it looks like this. Here, for example, Bitcoin got on TV. I wish I was asked this question in the final round. How's the new rubric? Don't forget to subscribe, because in a week, I'll tell you how to correctly store keys from Bitcoin wallets. And also, where Satoshi Nakamoto is actually hiding. Whew, man, a lot of stuff, right? Well, in the future, there will be even more news, events, and interviews with the brightest representatives of the crypto industry. Therefore, stay with Nakamoto Jedi, share the video, and leave your likes. And of course, let me know in the comments what you would like to see in the next episode. See you soon.